I, I got into this race because I was worried about the financial situation in our city. We had taken over by the state. We had FBI officials carting away crates of documents. I thought to myself, I could jump in here and get involved. I'm not afraid to read a spreadsheet. And I'm not ethically challenged. So that, that's how all of this began. As I educated myself, I became aware that the city council has a limited role to play. They can't spend money, they can't initiate spending. But all of a sudden, I got immersed in zoning. And zoning became a big issue that I had to study and learn about. And the city council determines a lot of things. I'm really hoping that we pass the new zoning ordinance that's in place. Uh, there are three major powers that the city council possesses. One is city ordinance and resolve passage. These can range all the way from living wage ordinances, in which we just passed, to responsible employee ordinances, to anti-bullying legislation that protects children. So I think it's important that we have people who reflect the, the issues that are, this community deserves so that they can take leadership on some of the most pressing issues that are affecting all of them, from foreclosures and children to abandoned houses and crime. We need people who can understand the innovation that you can use the city council for to help take leadership on that. The second is budget oversight. Uh, this means that we have complete access to approving or not approving certain budgets and using political to influence students. City employees cannot vote on any uh, aspect that reflects, reflects to their occupation. There are a couple of things that I think we can be doing. One of the good things, I don't know, you know how many of you approve or disapprove of this whole ward representation uh, form of government that we have now, but I think one of the good things about it is that it holds people accountable to a, for a smaller part of the city. Um, you know, I think as LBJ said, you dance with the one that rung you. And, you know, if I get elected, it's the people of Ward 6 who put me there. And so I'm really concerned about not just the X, but also uh, Belmont Avenue. Um, people have complained to me about the decline of Belmont Avenue, and people have lamented about how once upon a time they could go to the X and shop. And, and get all the different things they need. I think it's really important that we bring together the landlords and the tenants and talk to them and talk to the Office of Planning and Economic Development and think about community block development grants smartly so that we can uh, provide some leadership and, and, and get things kind of, kind of moving and, and revitalized. So that's my answer. Typically for economic planning, what they need to do is they need to do something called community is this better? Uh, community uh, Development Corporation, something I actually did uh, for a living in working at in Holyoke. What these institutions did is they worked in individual neighborhoods to work with the residents to both funnel funds and use residents to talk about what they want to uplift, upkeep, re rehabilitate, and change. Sadly, uh, with the removal of the extra big corporation, we lost a community development corporation that was really important to making sure that residents of Forest Park and East Forest Park, which is slightly interesting with the current boundaries, were able to have a voice in the way that economic decisions were run. There was major funding that is coming down that both has to do with the South End, has to do with revitalization of arts and programs, and I want to make sure that everyone, including Forest Park, has a huge stake in that. that we're having around right is abandoned buildings and foreclosures in this area. Right now what you're seeing is millions of dollars of loss of wealth. Not only to you who are neighbors of foreclosures, but people who are in their foreclosed homes. For every abandoned building, blight, or a uh, number of flights in your area, people lose housing wealth by one to three percent. That's multiplied by the number of houses in your area. So as many of you who are homeowners are not only seeing the blight increase, you're seeing the wealth impact in your home. Those who are not homeowners, who are renters, you are seeing yourselves kicked out of homes. We have elderly, people who are the, of the aging populations who are being completely tossed out. And these buildings remain vacant. And these elderly are homeless. And we are taking the cost of that and the burden of that in this community. That is why I am focusing on three warnings that have already helped to start passing, uh, that we already got resolved from the previous city council, but we're looking to make sure we do home rule petitions local ordinances that go to the state level to pass one or more program on our clothing, ensuring that for at least six to eight months we take a break so that we are helping people refinance, find new homes, and are not being foreclosed on the meeting. The second is a forced modification program. 
If you receive a predatory loan that they can prove in court was predatory, then you can work that out and the bank is forced to work with you when you can prove that this particular product is predatory. And lastly is a tenant protection rule. If you are paying your rent on time and you have been, but the building has been foreclosed on, this ordinance would say that you can stay in your home until alternative accommodations are created. These things will not only fix the blight and abandoned buildings in our communities, it will help continuously build the wealth of the, not only the people in those buildings, but those around. My wife and I bought a home, which I think we could safely characterize <laughs> now as a little better as a fixer-upper. And um, you know, that was our first step. But you know, looking, looking at, we painted it, we put on a new roof. Um, in the last couple of years, we actually can boast uh, an increase in equity in our home, which is, which is really feels good in, in these economic times. But we were you know, lucky enough to be able to do that. Um, there are a lot of people in, in our city who need help. Um, and, and I think that there are, there are monies available to provide low interest or interest-free loans for people to do some fixing up when they, in fact, need help, want help, and want to um, represent you know, their dwelling with pot. I, I had an interesting conversation. I, I've been kind of a, a bit of a, I'd say, a zealot just in my own mind about, I've been really excited about the city just kind of cracking down on code enforcement. Because, you know, if, if people just let their property go, it's bad for the city, it's bad for morale, it's bad for aesthetics, it's bad for economics, it leads to increased crime. There's a whole theory about the broken window and letting that go and just watching what happens. So I'm really excited about that. But this, this woman, um, the one day that my wife went out campaigning with me actually, harangued me on her porch because she said, we also need to watch out for the people who are, who are vulnerable. Uh, imagine a, you know, an 80 year old woman who lived here her whole life and her husband passed away and, and her house is, is, is in trouble and she needs help and all the city does is whack them you know, with some tickets and, and with all kinds of enforcement issues. That's obviously a really painful thing for somebody. And so I, I just want to note that um, this is a, a multifaceted issue and, and I thought a lot about it. Thank you. 